Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another top 10 video. I should say another top 10 director video. It's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, yeah, so for today I was going to continue along with my Italian directors. Uh, did Just did a Lucio Fulci one, so I thought I'd go over to the other, you know, master of horror in my opinion. Uh, Dario Argento. Dario Argento has just done so many brilliant films in his career. You know, story-wise, visually-wise, um, you know, he's just one of the one of the greatest directors of all time, in my opinion. Um, you know, if you're a fan of Italian cinema and you haven't really checked out um, anything by Dario Argento, which would be kind of a weird thing if you're an Italian cinema fan, but these ten films need to be checked out. So, my top ten. Now, the number ten spot was kind of a... Uh, I, it was a toss up here and I really had to think about what I was going to put in here because the one film that I did leave out I really do love I think it's a really cool idea but I went with this one because I, something about this film I don't know I just find it super underrated it doesn't really get talked about a lot and uh, I ended up going with this one for number 10 do you like Hitch do you like Hitchcock now I think the reason why I went with this is because Alfred Hitchcock is my favorite director of all time I think the guy was just absolutely light years ahead of his time with his films and I like the premise I like the guy how you know this he's like a film student and a film nerd and he's you know witnesses or he kind of thinks that these murders are linked or to these um, these girls that conspired to do these murders and stuff so he starts to investigate um, now I went with this film over the Stenzel Syndrome. I really enjoy that movie. I think it's really good. It took me a couple watches to finally fully appreciate the film. Um, but you know, overall, I, I I went with this one because this one just it's kind of based on Hitchcock and it's kind of a you know it's kind of a homage to Hitchcock a little bit. You know, um, but no, I like the overall premise of this. I think it's one of uh, Dario Argento's you know better later films in his career. I know that. Like, Argento really in the last 20 years has kind of fallen off in my opinion like he hasn't done his best work was you know in the 70s and the 80s obviously um, But this one I, I really enjoy man. I think this one's fun underrated. Do you like Hitchcock number 10? Uh, number nine uh, Is uh, four flies on gray velvet now this is the Yeah, this is the third film in the animal trilogy uh, this one has a really weird, weird premise. I think the atmosphere in this film is really fucking cool. Very kind of underrated. I, you know, for Argento films, this is another one that doesn't get talked about a whole lot. Not as much as his, as his other ones. Um, yeah, this one's got a really weird plot to it. I'm not even going to try and get into it. Um, but I always really liked this one. I thought it was really fun. I'm not really 100% sure how the whole... Animal Trilogy kind of, you know, blends together, <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, Four Flies on Grey Velvet, this one is a cool film though, definitely check it out if you like your giallos and shit, so, number nine, uh, number eight, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, now this was the first film in the Animal Trilogy, this is just a fucking awesome film, man, absolutely love this one, uh, yeah, this is just fucking amazing, it, about this guy that witnesses this murder and then has to figure out what the fuck's going on, you know. Simple premises, but, you know, the movie's got so many twists and turns and just fucking amazing story, amazing filming. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I just don't understand how people cannot like Dario Argento's films. This is fucking brilliant. Very, very fucking awesome film. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. I highly recommend this one. Number eight. Number seven. The Cat of Nine Tales. This was the second part in the uh, Animal Trilogy. Another very cool fucking movie. Uh, Giallo at its best. I mean, these were the films that really made the up the Giallo uh, subgenre, I guess, or genre um, of, uh, I guess, they're kind of horror esque. I don't know. It, but, um, yeah, it's just another kind of investigation film, like most Giallos. But just done so fucking well, man. This is another one that I just absolutely fucking love. Tale of the Cat of the Cat o Nine Tales. Great ass movie right there. Love it. 
So number six, I'm going to go with uh, a girl that I've been actually obsessed with like my entire life. Uh, Jennifer Connelly stars in uh, Phenomena. Phenomena. She plays, I mean, how can you go wrong about a girl with like, you know, psychic powers and shit like that. This is such a weird, different film for Dario Argento to be doing. You know, he, he did a bunch of giallos and kind of, you know, kind of witch movies and, you know, supernatural films and stuff. And then this one's definitely on supernatural elements, but done really cool and well. But I mean, like I said, how can you go wrong? Jennifer Connelly, amazing shit. This is a great one. Great atmosphere. Awesome stuff. Love this movie. Phenomena. And you know, and it's crazy to have Phenomena so high on the list, but it's just how good some of his earlier film or some of his films are really. So So that was number six. Uh, into the top five. Um, I gotta go with this one because I just find this movie so fucking brutal. I love the idea of it. And it's opera. <coughs> You know, it's about a, a crazed fan. It's about this girl that gets this, uh, the lead in this, you know, opera. And crazed fan abducts her and makes her watch her friends get murdered by putting, like, these crazy fucking needles in her eyes and shit. This movie's brutal. I mean, anything to do with eyes. And now, if you're a Lucio Fulci fan, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There's so many amazingly brutal kills that Lucio Fulci does with eye gouges and shit like that. Well, this one is just on the same level, but it's just kind of constant in the film. It's so brutal to watch. I don't know. Opera. This is a really great one, man. Whoa. Uh, when did this one come out? 1987. So, this was kind of approaching really the end of Argento's, like, fantastic films, in my opinion. This is one of the very last great, great ones. But yeah, Opera, number five. Love that movie. Number four is uh, Deep Red, uh, another early Giallo, 1975, um, yeah, but an English jazz pianist that uh, witnesses murder, you know, very similar storylines, but the investigation in this movie is fantastic, I really like this version too, because this is like a totally uncut version, so it has... Um, you know, the extra footage cut back into which is in uh, Italian, right, so with the English subs, but um, yeah, this one plays out, it's a long film, like, what does this one run? 126 minutes it says on here, so this is like the fully uncut version, it's a long film, but you know, super entertaining, really, really cool story, just keeps you thinking throughout the whole thing, that's one of the... My favorite things about Dario Gentile is Giallo is that I really, I have never figured out, figured it out before, I swear, at any of these films when I first watched them, so, which always keeps me interested. Deep Red, number four. Number three, you now, this was oh, such a toss-up for me, but because I think this is, like, one of the most beautifully shot movies besides his other one, but uh, this was the second part in the Three Mothers trilogy. Uh, Inferno from uh, 1980. Um, I mean, what can I say about Inferno, man? This movie is just shot so fucking beautifully. Like, the colors, the reds, the way he uses the shadows. Uh, the story is super cool and creepy. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I love how I love the structure of this film, too, how it kind of bounces around from city to city and it tells, like, all the stories and what's going on in, the, in those different areas and stuff. and But, you know, it's this is filmmaking at its best. Like, honestly, the colors, how they pop out at you, and it's just fucking so well done. Like, Argento, man, I, I really wish that, you know, the, the third one had been like this too, but Inferno number two, amazing shit. Or number three. Number two, had to go with, with Tom Bray. Uh, amazing score. <laughs> I love the score from this film. You know, really awesome giallo about uh, like a copycat killer who's mimicking these kills done by this author in his, in his latest book. I believe it is actually called Tom Bray. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just brilliant. This is just another fantastic fucking giallo by the master. Um, yeah, Tom Bray, everybody knows this one. Everyone said what can be said about this one. But yeah, number two. And my favorite 
film, which is kind of cliched, but there's lots of reasons for it. And uh, Suspiria is definitely my favorite Argento film. I mean, for so many reasons. I, I, I watched this film recently a couple times, and I cannot get over how well this movie is shot. I mean, the way he utilizes the color, like, Inferno shot really well, this one's done a little better in my opinion. I mean, there's so many, the way the colors pop in this film, the way he lights it, how the lighting is so fucking perfect, the colors just kind of, it adds to the creepiness of the film. You know, the kills, oh, fuck, amazing. You know, awesome, awesome uh, soundtrack, you know, by Goblin, or great score. You know, just everything about this. And I love how the, the score in this film kind of adds to, like, the story and kind of builds it up and really helps along with the colors. And just everything about this movie just blends together so well. But I can't get over the lighting and, and the way he... You know, there's shots where there's this one kind of in this alley, or not in this alley, but, like, going up these steps. And just the way it's lighted, I don't know how he fucking did it so perfect, but he's got the, the reds popping out on one side, and he's got this... You know, just one half of the pathway kind of lit up, and I don't know. It just the way he did it is fucking phenomenal. Put put a lot of effort into creating that for every scene, basically in the movie. Um, yeah, I love this one. This is just brilliant. Suspiria. You never say enough good things about Suspiria. Round this out. My top ten. Number ten. Do you like Hitchcock? Definitely give that one a shot. I think it's great. Number nine. Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Uh, number number eight, the bird with the crystal plumage. Number seven, the cat or nine tails. Number six, phenomena. Number five, opera, brutal film. Number four, deep red. Number three, inferno. No, I was, I thought it was going to be my number two, but I had to go with Tom Brady. Tom Brady number two, and Suspiria, of course, at number one. And it's my top ten Argento films. Now I thought that I thought this list was going to be actually quite hard to make, like harder to make. But then I looked at his films from like the last twenty years, and I was like, ah, I could really only pick out like maybe the Stencil Syndrome and uh, uh, Do You Like Hitchcock? I, I don't mind Trauma. I think Trauma was pretty good. Um, I thought, you know, honestly, I don't mind the Card Player. The Card Player is not a good movie. You know, it's definitely our gentle. I don't know what the fuck he's doing with that, but I don't know. Um, he's just done lots of really great fucking movies. Like, I love Dario Argento. I think he's brilliant. Anyways, I'm blabbling on here. Oh, yeah, I can't forget his masterpiece, Fan of the Opera. That thing was terrible. Worst movie that he's ever done, in my opinion. Um, anyways, Movie 616, signing out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Peace out, always.